my beautiful panda pals, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna recap what happened on The Other Way, season six, episode 11. So let's get started. Let's start things off with Joanne and Sean. Sean lives in a pretty small house with his mother and his daughter, so he rented out a large house in the countryside so that everyone could have their own rooms, including his little Jojo. Sean and I slept separately because Bella does not know that we're together. Now, that does not stop Sean from taking off his shirt and jumping into bed with her in the morning while the kitties are still asleep. Uh, oh, God. Pass the hit, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I do not have a fully formed opinion on Sean yet because we haven't seen a lot of him, but <laughs> the man's body is very yummy and yeah. I would absolutely ass to hips that man multiple times a day. Sean cooks everyone a traditional Irish breakfast and then him and her boys go off so that they can do some bonding. Who are Jesse? Nice. What a shot. Come on, big bro. Oh. Oh. Let's go. Her eldest son, Joey, is like, bro, it is so nice to finally meet you, especially considering you've been dating my mother for the past three years. We had planned to get this over a few times and then it just didn't shape out. I'm happy you're here now. I mean, you seem pretty genuine. Joey tells him his mother deserves the absolute best and Sean agrees with him and he tells him he really wants to be a part of their lives. I'm starting to get a lot more anxious. I feel like I'm lying to them. I, I want to just get it out and tell them that I married your mom. Yeah, so not telling anyone that y'all have been dating for the past three years was definitely the wrong choice. Cause here you are trying to get to know them, build a relationship with them and essentially get them to trust you. But you're building that relationship off of a lie. And poor little Joey is over here thinking that his opinion really matters to his mom and that how he feels about Sean is going to inform her decisions on whether or not she should take the next serious step in their relationship. But she's already taken that step without any input from him. Moving on to James and Tata. James is not feeling super great today. Probably got sick of his own lies. Tata decides to give him a traditional coin massage to help him feel better. He starts scraping me across my back with this thing. It scarred me and deformed my body. It's an Indonesian torture device. Holy moly cannoli does that look like it hurts. I obviously have never gotten a coin massage. I've also never done anything remotely close to that like gua sha or cupping, but everyone I know who's ever gotten those kinds of treatments only have amazing things to say about it. And it, I get really curious about what it would feel like, but it just looks like it hurts so damn much. If any of you guys out there have ever gotten any of these massages done, is it painful? James needs to rest, so Tata takes this opportunity to go to the park with one of her sisters and her kids. Her sister tells her to make sure to take care of her health so that eventually she can pop out a lot of kids. Her sister asks if she's even spoken to James about it, and Tata says that she's been way too heartbroken to even bring it up. Plus, She's super mad that he even confided in Adele about it and not her, his wife. As if he does not have a long-standing history of withholding information from the people that that information is going to her. Her sister tells her she needs to be calm and patient and talk to James so that she can hear his side of things. I need to know why he don't want to have a kid. It's because I want to be mom, so. I feel like if push came to shove, James would be like, oh, I'm too scared to bring children into this world, but I'm willing to try and then secretly go get a vasectomy. James and Tata go metal detecting on the beach and while they're digging up rusty nails and old coins, she goes ahead and tells him that she knows he told Adele he does not want kids. I don't know, that's kind of strange to just like throw at me out of nowhere. I wasn't like really ready for that conversation. Are you ever ready for any kind of conversation? The two sit down and Tata asks him if he actually even wants kids. And James tells her he has not made up his mind yet, but he isn't super enthused about the idea since the world has basically gone to shit and is so toxic and unstable. Maybe it's selfish of me to just be thinking that way because I know it's something that you really, you know, you really, really want to be a mother. I do. I mean, it is a little selfish considering your wife has been super vocal about wanting to be a mother and you have been super enthusiastically pretending that you want kids so that she doesn't leave you. You can't just stop being a parent. Like that's the rest of your life. It changes everything. I can't give them a great life. I don't even know if I can take care of us here. The whole world being toxic thing was definitely an excuse and this is the actual reason he does not want to have kids. 
children are a lot of work and he doesn't think that he can fully provide for them in the way that they are going to need him to. And that is a valid concern. I am so happy that he was able to get to the truth and tell that truth to his wife. You're supposed to have a kid to make your relationship strong. Maybe if we have a kid, it will make our relationship more strong. I'm sorry, what? No! Kids are not band-aids. If your marriage is in trouble, the answer is not to have kids to try and save it. James asks if she would stay with him if he ended up never wanting kids. Tata tells him that she's so hurt because before they got married, he kept encouraging this idea of him wanting children, saying things like he could not wait to have little mini-me's running around the house. I mean, I wish I could give you a solid answer one way or the other, but I think right now what we need to be focusing on is get ourselves settled here. I am so glad that one of them is finally making sense in this relationship. Whether James actually wants kids or not, I think he is correct in saying that they really need to focus on the two of them trying to build a life in Indonesia first. Metalia tells us that she does feel better after talking to James because she feels like he finally started telling her the truth, but she absolutely hates that she did not get any kind of answer because she doesn't want to wait in limbo forever. If he doesn't want to have kids, I will still love him, but I don't want to wait and hope forever. Let's touch base with Statler and Dempsey. Statler is feeling pretty guilty right now because she made her boo thing cry. I mean to make you cry. I'm finding it really hard to process. It just hurts me that I'm not trusted. She explains that every single person she's ever trusted in the past has let her down. So while she does actually trust Dempsey, she cannot help but hold her breath and wait for the other shoe to drop. I'm just always waiting for someone to let me down in some way. My insecurities are higher with the stakes being higher. Dempsey says she does understand where Statler is coming from, but that does not mean that her feelings are hurting any less. I'm just brutally honest. I hope you can appreciate that. <laughs> she does not. She does not appreciate it at all. The two kiss and make up just in time for Dempsey to take Statler on a mini detour to surprise her with something special. We're going beekeeping. <gasps> really? Yeah. No <laughs> Really? Yeah. You excited? Yes, I'm excited. At first, I was like, ew, who wants to go beekeeping? The answer is Statler. Statler wants to go beekeeping. Statler loves bees. I'm so excited. This is like a life dream of mine. Really? Yes. She starts to feel like maybe she's been a little bit too harsh on Dempsey because this excursion is making her feel like Dempsey does actually care about her. The pair buzz with excitement as their guide takes them under his wings to share some fun facts about these little insects. Statler's eyes have never lit up brighter and she looks over at her sweet little honey all ready to cross pollinate. Best day ever. It was unbelievable. All right, I am done with the puns. It's a new day and the girls are getting ready to cross the border into France. Statler is feeling a lot better about her relationship with Dempsey after her romantic beekeeping surprise yesterday, but she is definitely not excited about having to be on a boat for an hour and a half. I've only been on a boat once before and I spent the entire time sitting on a bucket myself. Statler hates boats just as much as she loves bees. Dempsey's super excited and cannot stop saying that they are on a boat. And Statler looks at her and she's like, bitch, can you take it down like a 700 notches, please? Feel a bit safe. Yeah, I just, I just don't want to talk right now. Okay. I can't do this, this is bad. Hey. I can't do this. But you can't say This is too much, yeah. Statler starts to spiral down her anxiety rabbit hole because she's scared of boats, she's also scared of vomiting, and her crippling fear is telling her that if she wants to be fine, she has to stare at the horizon. So she gets to the front of the boat and she just stands and stares. You don't wanna? No. You don't wanna sit? Stop. I'm just trying to help. You don't need to be rude to me. Dempsey gets super fed up. She tells us that she constantly feels that she has to repress her excitement because of Statler, and it drives her up a wall. Just allow me to need my space. Allow yeah, me okay, to... I'll leave you over there, and we just won't speak the whole time. That's over there, actually just... perfect. Enjoy yourself, I'm not sure. The two get into another argument, and Dempsey says that she's trying to be nice and accommodating, but Statler is being completely rude. And Statler is like, I wish I could turn off my anxiety for you, but I can't. Statler says when she has a panic attack and she has very high anxiety, she does get irritable and she can't control it. So it is what it is. And Dempsey obviously gets really upset and she cries as she gets up to leave. 
I think she just thinks my anxiety will be cured because it's a nice moment and it's like, no, the reality of it might be a bit much for her. Last but not least, we got Sharper and Shekinah. Shekinah has been at the hotel now for two days and she's really trying to rack her brain to figure out what the root cause of their altercation was. I just really think that Sarper needs to work on managing his anger and letting go of his need for control. She's on her way to meet with him and tells us that she loves him so she's willing to speak with him about this before deciding whether or not to throw in the towel. She is nervous because if Sarper does not seem like he's being sincere or comes at this with the entirely wrong attitude, she is ready to walk away. If he doesn't take this experience as, you know, a big learning opportunity, I don't know how this relationship can continue. They sit down together and Sarper tries to make small talk, asking how Adonis is, how she is, how the hotel is. Do you have anything to say besides like making small talk? Because that's not what I'm here for. Sarper's looking at her like, damn, this bitch did not come here to play today. So he changes tactics and he starts trying to squeeze out some sympathy from her. And he's like, I can't sleep. I have to take so many sleeping pills. Please come back to me. I'm nothing but a baby, goo goo gaga. Can I just stop you right there? I do not care about all of your ailments that are a result of your actions. Ooh, damn, bitch really did not come to play today. Sarper starts to pout and he's like, why don't you look like you feel sorry for me, baby? And Shekinah's like, bitch, it's cause I don't. I'm you not, want me to feel sorry for I'm, you? Feel sorry that you did what you did. Shekinah. Shekinah reminds him that not only did he rip her hair extension out of her head, but he never once asked her if she was okay. So she no longer gives a rat's booty hole if this was accidental or not. Sarper explains that everything was overwhelming him. Their plans for the future, the K-1 visa process, talking to his family about their decision to do the K-1 visa, and seeing their reaction. And he pleads with Shekinah to help him be a better man. If you just want, no, you're a grown man. You need to know that you don't make a woman happy by lashing out in anger. Damn, I honestly never thought I would be in the position where I'd be cheering Shekinah on, but here we are. Shekinah says that she feels so stupid because she genuinely thought Sarper was going to be different and proved to her that he was not the man that everyone in her life thought that he was. But it is looking like all of her friends and all of her family members were right about him. Thank you can't throw the one year to the garbage. I actually can. I actually can. can. Shekinah tells him that he needs to give her a real reason to stay and Sarper tells her, I love you a lot. And she tells him, love ain't enough. I actually was in a relationship and you're gonna listen to me, by the way, so don't roll your eyes and act like you're gonna zone out right now because I'm talking okay. about my past. I'm you listening. need to hear this. I'm listening. She goes on to say that this boyfriend was perfect. He opened every door, he pulled out every chair, and he basically worshipped the ground that she walked on. But he also had anger issues. And it got to the point where he was touching me in anger, like lashing out, pushing me, restraining me, tormenting me, literally frightening me. Sarper tells us that he feels even worse now because he knows his actions triggered a previous trauma. Shekinah goes on to say that she loves him more than she has ever loved anyone else before, but he is a grown ass man and he's never been held accountable in any of his previous relationships and that is gonna end with her. Shekinah tells him that she is willing to move forward with him, but only if he seeks therapy and she's not gonna go back home to his house until she sees some improvements. And that, my Panda Pals, is all I have for you today. I am genuinely shocked that Shekinah stood her ground as firmly as she did. I was not expecting that. And I'm also super shocked at how open and honest James was when he was talking to Tata about kids. I hope that that continues because that is effectively communicating and that is what makes your relationship stronger, not just having kids. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please do consider subscribing and giving this video a big furry thumbs up. I hope to see you guys for the next one. And as always, thanks for not letting me ride this train wreck alone.